The following are two true alien abduction stories from the UK. Romford, London, England. On the 27th of October 1974, John Avis, 29, and his wife Elaine, 25, and their three children, Kevin, Karen, and Stuart, had been visiting relatives at nearby Harold Hill in Romford in East London, UK. They left their relatives' house at 9.50 p.m., as there was a TV program John wanted to see, which was due to start at 10.20 p.m. The drive to their home in Averley should have taken them 30 minutes. Karen and Stuart were asleep, but seven-year-old Kevin was awake and saw a blue oval light travelling alongside the car. As they approached Averley, the light passed in front of the car, then vanished. It was around 10pm when things started to get weird. All noise inside the car seemed to have stopped, and the car radio began to smoke. Then a green mist enveloped the car as they continued to drive, before things appeared to return to normal. When they arrived home, John stayed in the car to fix the radio, and Elaine took the children indoors to put them to bed. She was shocked to find that it was now 1am. The following day, the family were extremely tired, but decided to ignore what had happened to them on this strange journey home. However, over the next few months, their lives would take an unexpected turn. Shortly before Christmas, John Avis had a nervous breakdown, which led him to give up his job. But other strange anomalies started to affect the family, where they were now repulsed by the smell of meat and turned vegetarian. John, who had previously been a heavy smoker, abruptly stopped smoking. Then unusual incidents started to happen around their home where objects started to disappear from the house. At around midnight, a loud droning noise could be heard along with strange clicking noises that could be heard in some of the rooms. Their telephone started to make strange clicking noises as if it was being tapped by someone. On another occasion, one of the children had a terrifying experience where they claimed that a man dressed like a clown was standing beside their bed. Two and a half years later, in the middle of 1977, the family had had enough and decided to get some answers to the strange events which had begun on that unusual October night in 1974. They contacted UFO investigators Andy Collins and Barry King. The couple told the investigators what had happened on October the 27th, 1974, and ever since that night had experienced weird vivid dreams that involved strange looking beings and what looked to be hospital operating theatres. John and Elaine decided to undergo hypnosis, and what they described revealed what thousands of other abductees had also experienced, and was a classic textbook alien abduction scenario. Whilst on hypnosis, they explained how their car had been pulled upwards by a beam of light towards a strange craft, and when they were aboard the craft, they were medically examined by what they described as four feet high creatures that resembled birds. They also observed other beings that were taller and wore one-piece suits and Bataclava-style helmets. These beings appeared to be in charge of everything aboard the spacecraft. The following story appears to have been a classic UFO abduction along with the strange incidents around their home. Many abductees claimed to have experienced poltergeist activity afterwards. John Avis later admitted that this was not the first time that he'd experienced something strange whilst driving where one night in 1968, he observed what he believed was a UFO in the sky. Was he also abducted on that occasion, but had not realised it? Blackbrook Farm, South Yorkshire, England One evening in early 1979, Joyce Bond was watching television in a family's 200-year-old farmhouse called Blackbrook in South Yorkshire in Northern England. Joyce had three daughters, Laura, 23, Jane, 14, and Susan, 10. It was 7.30pm when a phone started ringing and a friend, Sandra Streich, was on the line. Sandra only lived about a quarter of a mile away. Her friend was calling because she and her mother had been observing strange lights in the sky, which had been circling above Blackbrook Farm. The lights appeared to be silent as they could hear no aircraft noise, yet they were making her dogs bark. 
but at the same time Joyce's dogs were silent. Joyce and her daughters looked out of the window and saw a large red light hovering over their field. A neighbour had told her that there were also lights above her house, so Joyce went outside to investigate and saw a huge object directly above the stables. She had an eerie feeling that the object was watching them. The object was covered in flashing lights and for a second she found them mesmerising before quickly grabbing her daughters and running back inside the house. Joyce was so terrified that she locked all of the doors and switched off the lights. In a panicked state, she tried to escape through a small window before being pulled back inside. She then phoned her husband to come home. The family then decided to make a more organised attempt to escape by fleeing to a neighbour's house that was about 200 yards away. But something tried to stop them and they ran back inside. When her husband reached the village, he was immediately stopped at a police roadblock and was told there had been a traffic accident. As Mr Bond looked up into the sky, he could see aircraft from the nearby Air Force base at RAF Finningley. He thought it strange as the aircraft from the base did not normally fly at night. He met a neighbour from a nearby farm who told him that he'd witnessed a UFO in the skies. He then met up with some friends who told him that they lived two miles from their house where they described seeing a bright red light in the sky around 9pm. Now concerned, he decided to take an alternative route home, and as he got close to his farm, he could see that the top of their fence was on fire. Over the following days, he checked the local papers, but found nothing had been written about a road accident. A few years after the terrified event, Joyce had always felt that they had somehow lost time and became disturbed. In 1994, they decided to contact UFO investigators who suggested they undergo hypnosis. The family would then regress back to the incident, but the session was not overly successful as the family feared what the hypnosis session may uncover. However, what they were able to find out was that Jane recalled floating above the farm and seeing bright lights before being manhandled by strange beings. The session proved to be so stressful for Jane that her hair started to fall out. The UFO investigators kept in regular contact with the family and Jane and her daughters reported having strange dreams that involved small grey creatures with large black eyes. The family also reported other strange dreams where they were paralysed or naked in empty metal rooms. The girls, now much older, continued to describe having dreams that were flying or being sucked up into the sky of a Blackbrook farm even though they no longer lived there. Laura would often dream of the UFO just as she fell asleep and then seeing a door in the spaceship, but quickly woke up fear of what may happen next. They all had the impression that Blackbrook Farm was haunted and would occasionally witness a floating white figure, which they did not initially associate with UFOs. One night in 1990 at the farm, Laura witnessed a glowing white apparition approach the back door which frightened their dog. She switched off all of the lights and hurried upstairs to bed. That night she believed she'd been assaulted by an alien, and the following morning, the dog was too scared to go outside. On another occasion, Mr Bond believed he saw a ghost, and from 1979, the family believed the farm had a poltergeist. At the time, the girls were frightened to stay at the farm, and all claimed to have had strange experiences of their own. Joyce also claimed we felt a presence in the bedroom at night and reported hearing laughter and sniffing along with banging on the back door when nobody was there. On one occasion, her earring was pulled by someone or something she could not see. In 1992, she saw their dog levitate. Her daughters had the waking sensation of being paralysed or some invisible force in the bedroom held them down. When their daughters eventually left home, Strange things continued to happen in their own homes, where they would often hear strange voices and lights. The family feared that the poltergeist activity would pass down to their grandchildren in their homes. The Bonds also claimed that they were visited by men in black, who intimidated them to ensure that the alien abductions were kept secret. Could it be that the Bond family were regularly visited by aliens, was at the same time being haunted by ghostly visitations, was everything related to the aliens?